everyone to pay attention ministries so we're so glad things are able to come and hear another word uh, according to scriptures here i have a very interesting uh, topic today and that topic is basically the title of today's message is have you already been judged because lately i've been hearing of quite a few people who have been passing away and a lot of times what we hear is we hear people saying, uh, God will judge me. God will judge me. That is true, but they stop right there. They stop right there. God will judge me. They say that as if it is a future event. Many people think that once they pass, then that's when they're going to be judged. But let's see what the Bible says about that. So let's go to John chapter 3. We'll go through verse 16 through 21. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. And the word says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, he did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not judged. The one who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. I'm going to reread that, verse 18. The one who believes in him is not judged. The one who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light. Isn't that true? You see so many people doing things according to their own selfish desires. And it says here, so that his deeds will not be exposed. So let me read verse 20. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, so that his deeds will not be exposed. But the one who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds will be revealed as having been performed in God. The point I wanted to make here is many people are saying that God will judge me as if it is a future event. The Bible clearly states that if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you have already been judged. So when you go to your grave site, when your soul leaves this body, and you did not believe, you were already judged. So I believe what God wants you to understand today is check yourself before you wreck yourself. Do you believe or not? And you can't really say that you believe if you have no relationship, no intimate relationship with Christ. It's not about going somewhere to learn it's more about having an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. He'll direct you where to go to learn. Now, what does it mean then uh, to just believe, just to have an intellectual belief? Yeah, that's part of it. So let's go and, and look at what it means. What, what am I supposed to believe? John 1.1 1, 1 puts it this way. In the beginning, the word already existed the word was with god and the word was god the word who is the word the word is jesus christ you say now some may say well show me show me that 
Show me that in the Bible where the word was Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to reread John 1.1. 1, 1. It says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. Some people change that and say the word was a God. But the Bible tells us don't take away or don't add to. And that's what they did. So let me show you that the word was Jesus. You go to John 1.14, and here it is. The Bible says it this way. Make it smaller so we could see this. The Bible says it this way in John 1.14. So the word became human. Come on, somebody. It says, so the word became human and made his home amongst us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father, the father's one and only son. Now, tell me. It says here, so the word became human. Who became human? Jesus Christ. Now remember John 1.1, 1, 1, it said that the word already existed, always existed. The word was with God and the word was God. And then here in John 1.14, it says, so the word became human. It's talking about Jesus. See, that's why you have to study the Bible for yourself and not study what someone else is trying to teach you. Go to the scriptures. It says he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. That's clear. That's clear. Some people want to look at Jesus as a prophet. Some people want to look at him as an angel. What does the Bible say? That's the way that we have to look at him. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. When we go to the next scripture and we look at John 10, 30, because some people say, well, I don't believe it. What did Jesus say? He says in John 10, 30, the Father and I are one. That's what he said. He said the Father and I are one. Now, I know some people will try to misinterpret the scripture based off of what they've been told and literature they've been receiving. They try to say that that just means in agreement. They try to say that that scripture means that uh, the father, when he says the father and I are one, that, that, that means that they're just in agreement. Let me show you something that debunks that. Let me show you something that debunks that. You remember when Thomas was talking to Jesus. And we'll go here to John. 14, 7 through 11. Pay close attention here. And remember, some people say, well, no, that just meant that they're in agreement. So John 14, 7 through 11, start in verse 7. If you had really known me, you would know who my father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord. Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time? He says, have I been with you all this time? Who is he claiming to be? Because Philip was asking God, uh, Jesus to show him the Father. And Jesus replied by saying, have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am. How can that mean the other scriptures that they're just in agreement? That's why you have to get down to the scriptures and start studying for yourselves. 
It says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? He's trying to tell us, but yeah, we want to believe something somebody else is saying. Just go to the scripture and let God speak to your spirit so that you can get the necessary understanding so that you can be saved. He says, the words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. That's how they're one. The Father who lives in me does the work through me. Just believe, verse 11, just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. What are some of the work that Jesus did when he came to this earth? He healed the sick. He healed the lame. He got the blind to see. He showed grace and mercy. He brought the dead back to life. That's who Jesus is. But do you believe in Jesus or are you believing what you see in the world? Are you condemning Jesus because of what you see in the world? The truth of the matter is we should be condemning the devil for the conditions of the world and not Jesus. You see, brothers and sisters, someday we all are going to have to leave this body. What condition will you leave the body in? Still talking about Jesus will judge me? God will judge me? Because I've just shown you, you we have already been judged. Already. So it's a trick of the devil to get us to think that we have to get right at some point no, the thing is, you have to believe in Jesus so that you can be judged from the standpoint of, as to being one of those who are going to inherit eternal life. And if you don't, you've already been judged to eternal damnation. That is the condition that some people are walking in now. They're on their way to hell and they don't even know it. And I believe sometimes, uh, I believe one of the reasons they don't know it is because they don't study the Bible. Another reason they don't know it is because they're too busy playing in the playground of the world. And they're not taking note. He says, I came to save the world. If the world was already saved, then why would he have had to come? God is real. And it's unfortunate that a lot of people, they, they, they claim him, but they, their actions don't show that they believe. And so what happens is those people who claim Jesus, but their actions not showing that they believe in Jesus, other people are on the sidelines watching them. So they're judging Jesus by the actions of human beings. Which is wrong. Which is wrong. So we'll go over to, let's see where we're at. So the point that I really wanted to make today is the fact that people have already been judged by Jesus. Don't you go another day, don't you go another day saying that God will judge me because really all you're trying to do is justify your behavior. Quit looking at it as a future event and look at it as it is now because
if you take a moment out of your life and you begin to look at your life, then you should recognize your behavior. Is it for Christ or against Christ? Put yourself on the examination table and ask, do you believe that Jesus is God? Do you believe that God sent his only begotten son to this earth? Do you believe? Turn the TV off a minute. Put the book down. Chill out a second. And look inside yourself. Because the Bible clearly showed you, showed you that you have been judged. So I want to ask you this question. What side of the judgment do you fall on? What side of the judgment do you fall on? Because a lot of times people have not even asked that question of themselves. They just go about their own merry way saying, God will judge me, God will judge me. But again, you've already been judged. You've been judged either to go to heaven or you've been judged to go to hell. So you don't have to wait till you die and then, and, and, and then say God going to judge you. The Bible done already showed you. And that's what many people believe. Well, when I die, that's when I'm going to be judged. No, God is trying to get your attention today. He's trying to let you know that I came, that all you have to do is believe in your heart and not just say it with words. Because once you believe, the Holy Spirit comes in and then you become a worker for God in some form or fashion. You might be behind the, count of the camera getting God's word out. You might be one who's called to teach the word of God. You might be one who's called to, to pray for the people. But if you're not doing anything for God, can you really say that you belong to him? It is not by works you're saved, but, but it is by works to help you identify what side you're on, I would think. If you see yourself going up and preaching every day, or if you see yourself going out preaching sometimes, if you see yourself going out praying for people, you can look at yourself and say you believe because of your actions. And then I know some people, you know, they fake it. But I'm talking to the true believers. Because this thing is real. God is coming back. And I just, I'm just doing what God has called me to do. Bring the word to you. Again, I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to convert you. What I'm trying to do is to plant a seed and water a seed. Because transformation, as I said, does not come from knowledge. Transformation comes from, what do you think it comes from? Think about it just a minute. Transformation comes from conversion. From conversion then you'll see the transformation in the person. Because you can get all the knowledge that you want to get. You can get all the knowledge that you want to get. But what good is the knowledge if you don't use it? Not only if you don't use it, but if you don't understand it. When we don't know when Christ is coming, but you better be ready. You see, because when he comes, you can't say, well, God, I never heard a message. God, I didn't know that I was already judged. Today, you held accountable for what you heard. And all you have to do is go to the scriptures and study it for yourself. Quit listening and paying attention, and paying attention to other people's literature without using that literature, the Bible, to use that literature against. Always use the Bible as your source. And you pray to God to show you the way. 
Do you think he won't show you the way if he sees you intently trying to discover him? You're trying to discover God and you're trying to read the word and you're praying to him. Do you think God will not show up? I think God is telling somebody, quit paying attention to other people's literature and start paying attention to his word. Because his word was designed to show us how to live, what to expect, what to avoid. Do you get that, brothers and sisters? So I just wanted to take some time out this morning and to bring that very important message to you. At Pay Attention Ministries, we believe that you must read the word, you must understand the word, you must apply the word to see the power in the word. You must. Life is too short. And for some of you out there who are just uh, overlooking the word, it's time to come back home. I know there are some people out there who've gotten hurt, you know, by the loss of a loved one, you know, by infidelity. But don't blame Jesus for that. So the devil uses what they done to you to get you out of the will of God. That hurts you. Come back to Jesus. He'll make it right. He'll give you back even more than what you lost. But the question is, do you believe he will do that? Or are you so angry because of what happened? You see, a lot of times things happen, so that will be your testimony. Sometimes things happen because perhaps you were chosen to be a sacrifice. I, you know, those are just some, some, some reasons. I don't know them all. And some things that happened should not have happened. But they did. But my point is we cannot condemn Jesus for what has happened in our lives. Some people, they turn from Jesus. They say, well, God doesn't exist after something tragic has happened in their lives. How can you say that Jesus doesn't exist? Listen to me. How can you say Jesus doesn't exist once you had the taste of the true love of the world? Once you experience his grace, how can you say he doesn't exist? Now, it seems to me that, yes, yeah, something tragic can happen. Maybe one would say, God, I don't see why you allow that to happen. But to deny him? Say he doesn't exist at all? You got to check yourself. Did you really have him in the first place? Because I tell you, once you become connected to Christ and he sends the Holy Spirit, you know in your heart that you are connected. So don't let the world drown you into the things of the world that causes you to overlook Jesus Christ. Amen, brothers and sisters. So that's what I want to bring out to you today. So if this message really... If you really got something from this message today, I'll put it this way, then, then share this message with someone who's hurting. Let people hear what the Bible has to say about their circumstances. And for you, those of you who have been hurt by someone, don't allow that hurt to cause you not to believe in Jesus Christ because he is all powerful. He is all knowing and he's everywhere. And he is coming back. And the devil wants you to use that hurt against Jesus when he's the one that's mainly causing these circumstances and tribulations. But a lot of times we give the devil a pass. And we immediately want to condemn Jesus. I remember in the Bible it said, and I'm paraphrasing, when, when they, when they uh, captured Jesus, they... The, they slapped him. He said, for, for why have you slapped me? And that's what people are doing today. So again, I want to say that follow us on Rumble, YouTube, X. Rumble, YouTube, X. Facebook. And Facebook. 
like and subscribe and we need to get this message out we need god's people to become soldiers and to stand up because we are in a sick and dying world the true christians need to stand up the ones who have the holy spirit on the inside he'll take care of you he'll guide you and show you what you need to do just stand up so that concludes my message today and i want to thank you all for coming out and spending some time with us today and I hope that you take some time out to study these scriptures that I was able to reveal to you today so that God can speak to your heart so that you can have a change. And just think about it. Once you change, no telling who else might change. Amen. So God bless you and we'll see you next week. Take care.